Dear Akoti, my sister, welcome to another womanhood video. So just as promised in this video, we're going to be talking about more of the feminine roles and then more specifically the working woman versus the feminine role woman. So let's go ahead and dive into this. I'm really, really, really hoping that my battery doesn't die. I've already prayed and asked y'all to fill it with his supernatural energy. So let's hope that we can get through this whole presentation without any issues. But of course, before we begin, there is a Facebook group that I would definitely suggest you join for the Dear Colty YouTube channel. And so that link is directly below. And then also for anybody who's new, hello if you are, my name is Sinead. Welcome to Dear Koti, where we encourage you as a spiritual woman to learn the truth of Yahuwah, to teach it to your family, to your children, and to counsel your husband with it, and also to be prepared for what's to come. So. Just so you know who I'm referring to, anytime I mention Yah or Yahuwah, I'm referring to our Father, our God, our Creator. And anytime I ever mention Yahusha, that is the Messiah's Hebrew name and how I pronounce it. So just want to get that all out of the way. Um, and let's go ahead and dive in. So, um, many women today experience an overwhelming number of expectations. As women, we can... Um, we're expected to earn a four-year degree, have our own business or ministry, work for a boss without complaining, have um, a perfect marriage without spending very much time with our husband, raise perfect children who spend 50 hours a week in some sort of daycare, have a large home where nobody spends much time in it, all while looking like a model, a size four, never growing beyond that. This is the expectation society has for us and it's completely impossible. In fact, we women are actually only expected to fulfill four roles and we talked about them earlier in the last video so i suggest you go ahead and watch that but obviously it would be being a companion being a mother being a homemaker and the family organizer so anything outside of that is extra college is extra self-employment is extra ministry is extra a home-based business is extra working out of the home is extra everything else is extra so first let's get a hold of the four roles that we have to play and then if we're able to add on the extra things so there's nothing wrong with going to college or any of that stuff Totally not against it. I went to college myself, but it's all about making sure that you have those basics down. So we're going to talk about the feminine role. Um, all right, here we are. All right, so these are the four roles as follows. So the first one is the companion to your husband or the wife. So the husband-wife relationship is the bedrock foundation of the entire family. And the family is the foundation of our civilization. That's something that we don't tend to think about, but the Hebraic mindset did. That's why they focused so much. Everything was family-oriented and community-oriented because it first starts with the husband and wife who then creates that family, and that family then creates the whole civilization or the whole society. In addition, connecting with your husband is a woman's greatest earthly joy. That spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional bond can be nurtured or destroyed through our actions. And that's something that we learned with the duality of women. Again, I'll link the post for that below or the section is in the womanhood section of the blog. So definitely check it out. So continuing on with being a companion to our husbands, when a woman empathizes with her husband, understands him, admires his masculinity, appreciates his positive traits and actions, she does her part to build her husband up and to also build her own feminine persona or character. She draws her husband to her physically and spiritually. And add to all of this the girlishness and sprightly self-dignity a woman becomes literally irresistible. So becoming a companion, a fascinating companion to your husband is the overall point of these videos. So this whole relationship um, when it comes to womanhood and relationships and encompasses everything taught in these videos. So the second role would be a loving teacher and a guide of the children, also a mother. So not every woman will be blessed with motherhood. I'm one of those ones who yet have had to have any children. But for those of you who are mothers, take some of the words of Jackie Kennedy Anassis to heart. She says, if you bungle raising your children, I don't think whatever else you do matters very much. So every day really presents an opportunity for you as a mother to teach and to guide your children. Related to this concept is this belief that one of the basic human rights in our world is the right for a woman to raise her own children full time rather than having to hand over her little darlings to someone else um, no matter how qualified that worker may be. 
Many child rearing schools of thought exist and one trait can be found in most of them and that's consistency. And that's because children th thrive in a consistent environment, one where the rules are the same every day. Thoughtful planning and a happy, stable marriage really can help you as a mother to give your children a consistent home life. And as a woman, you, as you learn to accept yourself and others and develop your character and your feminine nature, you as a woman become a more loving person and make your way towards being a masterpiece of a mother. And when I think of this, I think of honestly, there's two women that I follow. Um, one is Makeup Mommy on Instagram. Her name is Sarah, and she has the most beautiful spirit I've ever seen. She, to me, is an epitome of being a feminine woman. She completely embraces her femininity, but she has, um, I believe, three children and two dogs, and she homeschools her children, and she's with her children every day, and they range in ages. Um, her, She has the oldest, I think, that's about 16, and then the youngest, I can't remember. I, he's over seven, at least. Um, he's a you know they're all pretty older as far as they're not like toddlers or anything but to see her in interacting with her children every day is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen and it's if I was to ever have children I would want to be a mother like her and even um, another woman named Ellen Fisher her, her YouTube channel is Ellen Fisher and I think her Instagram is Ellen Fisher as well but she also goes by Mango Island Mama and watching her raise her two little boys. She's also an epitome of being a feminine woman. She does things differently than Sarah from Makeup Mommy. She's actually um, more minimalistic and she's vegan and you know she lives her life differently. She lives in Hawaii with her husband and her two kids. But both of these women really just to see how they teach their children and how they really interact with their children. They are full-time mommies and it's just really awesome to see. So. The third role would be being an excellent homemaker. So homemaking is a calling, a vocation that all women share. Seeing home duties as an expression of joyful devotion to both Yahuwah and our family actually helps reduce the drudgery of it. It makes it actually um, more important to you and you actually learn to embrace and love every aspect of it. Home duties keep your family members well and safe and help them to be happy. It helps them to achieve their goals in life as well as it brings pleasure to your entire home. An excellent homemaker cares for herself also knowing that her own well-being and health allows her to take care of her family. So there's no neglection of your health and taking care of yourself. It's about just not becoming self-centered. Um, so the fourth fourth role, fourth feminine role, would be the family organizer. And this is the person who needs to know where all the families are, family members are, or at least where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to be doing. Somebody who knows where everything in, is in the house and when somebody needs something, they immediately know where it is and can tell you where it is. Um, and that someone is a wife and a mother. And some having things like a homemaking binder or a planner or a calendar really helps you to become an even better homemaker. So for me, because it's just my husband and I, I typically I have a calendar for our budget so that we so that he always knows what bills are coming up um, and so that we can always see together, you know, and, and decide together. He makes the final decisions, but we can decide as as a family, you know, where the money's gonna go. But I also have my own things like I mentioned yesterday, I have a um, a chalkboard that has my list of daily homemaking tasks so that I make sure I get them all done because in the middle of making all these videos it's very easy for me to forget to do things like making sure that the home is nice for when my husband comes home from work so he's not having to put stuff away when he comes home or moving stuff so that he can sit down so little things like that also streamlining your possessions and having a home for everything helps you to organize your home effectively every possession you own should be beautiful useful or preferably both and that reminds me of a book that i have over there the magic of tidying up uh, definitely a really really awesome book if you haven't read it I definitely suggest that you get yourself a copy or borrow a copy and practice it once I started practicing it I got rid of a lot of crap that I was holding on to and I really started to appreciate everything that I do own in my home um, so let's talk about the four feminine roles today in the 60s and in the 70s whole industries started to spring up to support the working wife and mother you had daycare centers fast food restaurants, house cleaning um, services, etc. However, these industries cannot substitute for the care and love given by a woman to her family. A daycare center 
uh, may meet every specification that's set by the state, but they're not going to give that child the love of that mother. A fast food worker can make you a good burger and fry combo meal, but eating it every day is going to really just damage the health of your children and your family. A hired housekeeper is going to make the house look clean, but she can't make it look pretty. You know, you get the point. So sometimes for a short period, it can be necessary to blur these roles between a husband and a wife. Uh, family members can pitch in or you can hire somebody to do it, but it needs to be a temporary solution to the problem. Blurring the roles may be necessary during either a wife's disability, a husband's disability, an emergency, a natural disaster, the list goes on. So I'm not saying there's not times when we need to blur those roles and either overstep our boundaries or somebody step into our role and take our role. Um, so let's talk about first the feminine role versus the working wife. Then we're going to jump into times when you are justified in blurring the roles, times when you're not, um, whether our daughters should learn um, to have a career. We're going to jump into a lot of different things today that have to do with being a working woman, staying at home and being a self-employed mom versus just being a stay-at-home mom, all of these things. So the most important way to enhance your femininity is in the home, serving as the wife, the homemaker, the mother, the organizer. Here you have a field in which you can really truly grow and blossom as a woman. As you love and care for your children and cheerfully devote yourself to the ordinary chores of the household and serve as the understanding wife, you acquire gentle feminine traits. Yet in spite of this ideal feminine role, women are moving away from the home and into the working world. The U.S. Department of Labor, according to a 2005 report, actually said 70.5% of all mothers are employed outside of the home, either full-time or part-time. Of those who are married, 68.2% are employed outside of the home, and mothers who had children younger than a year old, 53% of them were outside of the home working. These figures don't include women working in home industries, family businesses, helping on a farm, babysitting, or XYZ. So let's talk about the work away wife. And that's a term that I'm going to use because it's basically the opposite of a stay at home wife. And so I want to make sure that I'm careful of what I say because I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to um, make, make you feel condemned in any way. So I'm going to be my best to try to be, you know, very gentle, but at the same time sharing truth with you. So as a workaway wife, you have to make sure you're careful because as you become more independent and capable, you may find that your husband becomes more dependent on you. You may find that your sparkle and energy for life disappears as you drone away at a job that may be boring and repetitive. I know how that feels because I used to work two jobs uh, while my husband was going to school and then working a part-time job and I can say that my sparkle and energy was gone. <laughs> the workplace requires everyone to become more masculine and achievement driven. A woman's employer requires that a certain quota is met or that certain objectives are accomplished. So traditionally your feminine careers like teaching younger children, customer service, secretarial work, etc require a little bit less ma masculinization, but generally any kind of work outside of the home increases your independence as a woman, your leadership abilities, and your masculine efficiency, which can over time lessen your feminine nature. Even if you're justifiably working outside of the home, you have to make sure you have caution in it and that you don't want to emasculate your man, you don't want to do it for too long, you don't want to uh, become too comfortable. A workaway wife almost always gives the best of herself at the job because otherwise it'll disappear. So consequently, a workaway wife's family can suffer and typically they suffer in silence without saying anything because they love her. A husband may feel that he's standing in the way of her job and her greater achievements if he was to ask her to quit and to focus on the family. Um, a husband may also be indoctrinated into the feminism movement, which many of them have been these days, to believe that your traditional role as a woman is oppressive for you when it's really not. It's freeing. Children, especially those who go to public schools, are surrounded by workaway wives all day. Principals, teachers, cafeteria ladies, the list goes on. And so they begin to see it as the norm as well. And children may actually feel that it's selfish for them to want their mother to be home and to and they work to actually suppress that natural feeling that they have within them that they want their mother's presence around them. So a compromise that couples have decided on doing these days is having the wife be self-employed instead of working out of the home. 
Um, on the surface, this may seem like a really, really good option. However, it doesn't always work out. So you really need to determine between you and your husband if that's right for you. Um, but there are some difficulties that I want to make sure I present to you so that you do understand. And these are things that I personally experience as I do YouTube um, full time while I'm home. So the work at home my wife may succumb to the temptation to keep on working this means that most of the um, most of the time so when you work outside of the home you have cut and dry hours typically um, but working in the home you can work whenever you want and so you may be tempted which i know last night for example um, I worked until about nine o'clock at night while my husband is, you know, sitting on the couch waiting for me to come enjoy time with him. There's a lot of times when that happens and he's like, okay, babe, you can get off the computer now. And so you have to really set those boundaries. If you are going to work from home and be self-employed, you have to set those boundaries and say, I have a cutoff time and I'm not going to touch my work once this time hits so that I can spend time with my husband and with my family. Um, another issue may that be that you may be required to put your work demands above your family needs so if you're self-employed you face the need to consistently seek new business and make sure that your current customers are happy if you work for someone else and you just happen to work from home your boss will likely require that you need to put the business first at least for part of your day so work tension and conflicts invade the home working at home can disrupt the peaceful atmosphere Working at home, may dis you may disappoint people without meaning to, meaning you may disappoint your customers, you may disappoint your family, you may disappoint your boss, the list goes on. Finally, the work at home wife's husband may come to resent uh, the time and attention that you give to work versus the home activity that you have, even if it was his idea to begin with. So working at home, yes, it can be an awesome, awesome blessing, especially in an emergency, but you have to realize that there are some difficulties that come with it and you have to be willing to set those boundaries and to plan around that so that your family can still function. So when are women, when are we women justified in working? So if you're widowed, divorced or single or your husband's disabled, you're justified in working for sure. It depends on your need for money. If you're married and your husband's physically able, then you're justified in the following situations. So emergencies. You're justified in working when a financial emergency literally gives you no alternative. In this case, you work because you have to and the family easily accepts the situation. They may even consider it a noble sacrifice of yourself. In a situation like this, the family usually works together through the crisis and so there's little harm done. Furthering the husband's education or training is another reason. So if your husband's attending college like my husband was, or training for a career, you may be justified in working, especially if he has no alternative to secure the education. Since his training is going to prepare him to provide a better living for the family, and since the situation should be only temporary, you may be justified. But again, this all depends on the number of children, their age, and care while you work. You have to take all of that into consideration. Keep hitting my peace lily here. So beware of the one danger though. If you help your husband through school, there's a temptation for him to continue after he graduates. He'll need to get established. You'll need many things with after going without work for so long. So is there any harm in working a little longer? Maybe not. But after the necessities, you tend to add comforts and luxuries that you didn't have before. And then you become accustomed to having that extra income and then you actually end up needing the income to support your new luxurious lifestyle. So. This is a huge way that a lot of a lot of temporary, you know, working mothers end up getting pulled into the workforce forever, really permanently. Um, the third reason you would be justified if you are married was if you are an older woman and your children have moved out. You have a lot of time on your hands and so you decide to go and work. Useful employment may seem better than sitting and idling and twiddling your thumbs um, doing things that aren't important. But you also want to make sure you consider these things. If you're married, you still technically have a household to care for, and you still have children that may need you, even if they are living on their own. So if, you, if, you, if you're tied to your job, you may not be available when they need you. Your influence is important in your grandchildren's life. You may be needed in your community, giving service to them. Your devotion to your household, your family, and charity actually enhances you femininely versus a job which makes you more masculine. So keep those in mind as well. 
Um, another, uh, now we're going to talk about reasons why you would not be justified in getting a job if you were married to a perfectly able husband. And while you may not agree with me on these things, just, just hear me out. So to ease a pinch, you may not have enough money to cover expenses. There are too many things that you need and can't afford. You grow tired of never having enough money, so you seek some employment, perhaps with your husband's approval. The problem with this is that it's not worth the price that you pay. Your presence in the home is way more important. Instead of going to work, you need to learn to cut expenses. And that's one thing that my husband and I have definitely experienced. Before, when I was working two jobs and he was working one, we had a lot of luxuries that we were purchasing because we had extra money to spend. And so when now when we're working on one income, we've learned to cut a lot of those luxuries out that we realized half the time we didn't even use them. Um, and so now we literally like we don't have cable we have only internet so that we can watch Netflix so we only pay for internet and Netflix um, you know little things like that we keep our expenses very 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 low we only have one car instead of two not that I can drive yet anyway but the point is is that we don't add on these extra luxuries and even with learning how to budget we've before we would be living still paycheck to paycheck when we first started budgeting now we find that we have a lot of money left over in our checks and we're not even worried about when the next paycheck is coming because we've learned to budget and we really only buy things that we truly need so it's really really important that you learn to cut expenses and learn to budget and be thrifty move to a less expensive home sell a car um, buy clothes at secondhand shops be thrifty so if you're only going to work so that you can purchase luxuries, you may want to do that because you want the extra extra comforts, household equipment, furniture, clothes, carpet, whatever. Your husband may encourage you to work because maybe he wants to get a pool or a cabin or a boat. But, um, or you may want things for your children. You may want to take them to a better school or um, save up for college. And all of these, yes, they may seem um, justified, but the sacrifice is much greater. It's better to just trim the luxuries and be thrifty. So another reason people come up with would be women come up with is that they're bored at home. They um, get tired of having to do the same housekeeping task or watching the kids. And I've seen this happen where a woman went back to went to work because she wanted to get out of the house and not have to watch the kids. And her paycheck literally just covered daycare. And she didn't care because she was happy because she was outside of the house. But you have to realize that that's just you seeking relief in something else that's just temporary. And your husband may support the idea to keep you happy and it may end your boredom. But remember, it's temporary. You're going to get bored with that job at some point. The problem is that you're buying your happiness at the expense of your family. You're now, you know, having your kids go to a daycare and be with somebody who's not their mother when they'd rather be with you. You're putting your desires above your family's needs, which you're really uh, reversing the divine order of things when it comes to your role as a woman. And so this is never justified. So another reason would be that women feel like they want to do something important. And so this is a serious thing that we want to talk about. You may feel like that what you're doing at home is not important and that men have more important jobs. Noble contributions to mankind, you may reason, are made in the fields of science, industry, healthcare, government, the arts, etc. Women who think this have a false idea. They have a false belief. They exaggerate the importance of the man's work and underestimate the importance of the woman's work in the home. Noble as the contributions of men are, they don't surpass a well-brought-up family. A doctor spends his time saving lives, but you as a mother are in the simple routine of your home. You're saving souls. Learn to see this uh, distant scene, how your patient devotion to your family produces men and women of worth, the greatest contribution to any society. Realize that your work is very important. You may see it as something that's not, and people may make fun of you because they follow the feminist approach, but you have to see the truth of what you're doing. You're building a community and a society by choosing to stay home and raise your family. Oh no, my battery. Okay, let's see. Can we, can we, can we, can we, can we, can we make it? Can we make it? Can we make it? Okay, so to ease the load for the men. Oh, that's not where I am. Whoa, where did, what, what? 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 I'm like, where am I? Am I? Got distracted, you guys. <clears throat> okay, so another reason that women come up with 
to go work is to ease the load for their man. When you see him under pressure and strain, or you're con he's concerned about meeting expenses for a growing family, you may feel it's your duty to help him by getting a job. And though this may seem right, it's not necessary. You have been blessed with a man, a man that Yah has built with strength, endurance, and the emotional makeup for this kind of situation. Rather than share his burdens, strengthen him for those burdens. Give him the appreciation he needs. This builds confidence within him and helps him to succeed. Ease his burdens at home by reducing the demands on him, on his time and on his money, and by providing a peaceful home, so cutting your expenses, making sure you're really dutiful about your roles so that he can come to a home where he is renewed versus stressed. So let's talk about careers for a second. If you have talent as an artist, a writer, a designer, the list goes on, should you pursue a career? Think twice before you take this step. Your foremost duty is to your marriage and to your family. Here, you must succeed. A career may sidetrack you from your family. Not only will your career demand your time, but your interests and sometimes your soul. If your husband and family must be second place, you're making an unwise choice. The price is too high to pay. So take Taylor Caldwell. She's a widely read author and here's what she had to say. There's no solid satisfaction in any career for a woman like myself. There's no home, no true freedom, no hope, no joy, no expectation for tomorrow, no contentment. I would rather cook a meal for a man and bring him his slippers and feel myself in the protection of his arms than have all the citations and awards I have received worldwide, including the ribbon of Legion of Honor in my property and my bank accounts. They mean nothing to me, and I am only one among the millions of sad women like myself. Another woman, Beverly Sills, a well-known well opera star, said, Women are told today they can have it all. Career, marriage, children. You need a total commitment to make it work. Take a close look at your child. He doesn't want you to be bright, talented, or smart, any of those things. He wants you to love him. He will be the one who pays the price for your wanting to have it all. Think carefully about having that baby. Not to have it would be a great loss. To have it too late greatly increases the health hazards for you and the child. To have it without a commitment to it would be a great tragedy. Another woman writes, I'm in my early 30s, single, a corporate officer and executive. I serve on three boards, of um, one on national organization. With all my customer contracts, employee supervision, and peer contacts, my total influence doesn't constitute a single drop in the bucket to what a wife and mother contributes to society. She directly affects the mental outlook of her husband and her children. She has the power to make her home heaven or hell. That's what I call woman power. So you may think, um, let's, so now we've talked about careers. My personal story, I went to school um, for a career and I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I never really found a job in that specific career and then once I started learning about um, femininity and the true roles of a wife, I really began to embrace it because I noticed that in the working world I felt very stressed, I felt very burdened, I wasn't happy and it was reflecting in all of my relationships, especially in my relationship with my husband. And so looking back, though I went to school, do I regret it because I have loans? No, because I learned knowledge that I can still use to this day, but at the same time, um, if I had had this knowledge of the traditional roles back then, I probably would have chosen not to go to school. But, you know, everything happens for a reason. If I hadn't gone to school, I would have never met my husband. So definitely don't regret it at all. I cherish it every single moment. Every time I have to pay a loan, I cherish that because I wouldn't have met my husband without it. Um, but I don't think it's necessary for me, for people to have to go to school and to have to have a career as a woman. I truly see the importance in raising a family and even if you don't have children, being able to influence the children in your family and really just being able to take care of your husband and your home is a whole job within itself. And it really does get... Um, that would be my mother calling me. But it really does get downplayed by many women who, who think that just because you're at home that you're wasting away, but you're really not. Um, so that's my personal story. I'm going to end it here and then I'm going to go charge the camera and then I'm going to resume when the camera's charged. So bear with me ladies, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I'm back. I'm going to try to get this done and I didn't even charge it but for like five seconds. So 
let's go ahead and get through it. So should daughters be trained for careers? So you may think your daughter should prepare to make a living in the event of widowhood, divorce, or other emergencies, but consider the following viewpoints. One, being trained for a career is going to make her independent. So um, one of the features of femininity is dependency. It doesn't seem wise to direct her to do a career that's going to make her independent. By doing so, she loses her need to have a man care for her, one of the charms that actually attracts a man to a woman. She's also in danger of acquiring masculine tendencies, a fault of so many professional women. Now, this isn't to say that if your daughter wants to go to school, you can't let her go to school. These are just things, obviously, everything that I point out in this video are things to be aware of when it comes to femininity. There are, of course, some professional women who manage to stay feminine either through a nature so strongly feminine that it can't be subdued or by conscious effort. So it's definitely possible for a woman who has a career to be very feminine, to be able to come home and turn, switch off the work woman and put on the stay at home mom woman. So again, these are all just things to be aware of when you're considering things like going to work or when you're considering even teaching your daughter um, to be more independent or going to school. Um, so you may think, um, so encouraging her to work. Training for careers encourages women to continue working after marriage. The intensive training they s gets wasted if they put it on a shelf, um, so it's seen as wasted. So they're tempted to use their knowledge whether they actually need to work or not. So this is another kind of difficulty that you face when you do train your daughters to go get a career and you raise them up that they have to go get a career. They tend to think that if they go to school that they end up wasting all that knowledge away and so they might as well do something with it and so they end up working. Um, training also can become out of date. So qualifications for a job change from year to year. The woman who is qualified at one time may be out of date a few years later. That's what happens with me because I was trained in retail, um, uh, retail merchant, well, merchandising and retail management and things like that. And things that I learned back in school when I graduated in 2014, now in 2017 are almost like non-existent. Um, so when she marries and has children, she drops out of the workforce and then when she returns, she must again take further training just to qualify for her work. So was the earlier training even worth it? Could her time in college have been better spent on other subjects? Um, it's an easy escape from marriage. So the independence which results from the ability to make money um, can be dangerous when it comes to a woman thinking of it as an escape. So when difficulties arise in her marriage, she'll be so financially independent that she'll be she'll easily leave the marriage versus really being forced to try to work it out because she's not um, independent and she's dependent on the man. Um, so she'll end up having more of an excuse to leave and to break the marriage versus staying. Um, also deprives deprives her of a liberal education so an overall education so it doesn't seem logical for a woman to train for a specific career in the event of widowhood or rare emergency if by doing so she bypasses a rich cultural education which would make her a better wife and mother a man may may a man may well trained for motherhood and homemaking if this whole logic is sound so a lot of women like me go into school and train for a specific thing. So it's better to almost kind of get that very wide range education so that you can be more useful when it comes to your family and things like that rather than getting a very specific education and then feeling like it goes to waste when you enter into motherhood and decide to stay home. Um, the best education for a young woman is a broad liberal education. It better prepares her to understand her children and help them with their education in their life ahead. It helps her equally as a wife. She's more interesting and more open to new ideas. She has a better understanding of the world and is therefore a better citizen. The woman with a liberal education is better prepared to meet an emergency than the woman who's been trained for a career. Her broad education is more inclined to develop creativeness, intelligence, sound reasoning, and wisdom. When faced with an emergency, she has more ingenuity to solve her problems. If she must work, she can find her way into the working world and qualify for a job better than the woman who trained for a career 10 years earlier and now finds herself out of date. So. I just quickly want to say there's nothing wrong with going to school. I encourage it if you truly want to. There's nothing wrong with 
getting training, especially if you're somebody who doesn't have a kid and you don't have a husband. But if you are a woman who truly, genuinely either has a family, has a husband, or wants those things, keep these things in mind. Know that there is going to be a point where maybe you won't be working and your training will no longer be efficient. And when you decide to go back to work, you may need even more training just to justify the training you already have. So it's just and just keeping these things in mind. I'm not trying to discourage you or, you know, condemn you. I went to school for a very specific niche field. So I, I'm speaking from experience here as well. Um, so what is the harm in working and being a woman working? So first, you can harm your man. When you work, you rob your husband of his right to meet ordinary challenges and to grow by these challenges of trying to provide for the family. As you become more capable and efficient and independent, he feels less needed and less masculine. This weakens him as... Um, this weakens him. I don't even know what I was writing here. <laughs> Oh, as you lift up, <laughs> he sets the bucket down. So as you continue to lift up in your independence, he sets his bucket down. Um, it harms you as the woman. So when you work by choice, you tend to lose some of your womanliness. We've talked about this. Uh, when you work, you tend to take on a masculine trait, aggressiveness, boldness, capability, efficiency, and independence, resulting in the loss of the feminine charm. Um, how much charm you lose depends on the type of work. Less masculine jobs like you know, teaching and nursing and um, childcare and secretarial things don't really affect you as much, but any type of work typically that earns money and encourages those masculine tendencies will encourage you to become more masculine. Um, when a woman divides herself, this is a quote from a book, I forget the name of the book, I think it's like Steel and Velvet or something. Um, so, when, I'm trying to beat the time too, it's 3.09, my husband should be home soon. When a woman divides herself between two worlds, it's difficult for her to succeed in either. In her world alone, she has challenge enough to achieve the domestic excellence she deserves. Here she is the understanding wife, the devoted mother and homemaker, and gains great satisfaction from a job well done. This takes great effort. To divide her time and interest between two worlds makes success in either difficult. So that's what I was talking about when I was like spreading yourself too thin. Even if she rejects her home sphere and turns her heart and soul to the working world, she will have difficulty. In many jobs, she'll have a natural disadvantage. She'll not meet a man's excellence in his world, but will always be secondary to him. So she wanders between the two, having rejected her own world where she could have been superior because that's her role, and chosen another world she'll never be anything but second rate to the men. And this isn't to say that there's glass ceilings that we need to break or anything like that. It's realizing that there's specific roles that have been designed by Yahuwah for man and for woman. Um, and that's something that a lot of us women, especially being raised in the modern way of thinking, we don't want to come to terms with. We're completely against that, that traditional thought. Um, when a woman works because it's her husband's idea, an even greater harm comes. His suggestion that she work casts doubts in her mind as to his adequacy as a man. If he must lean on her, she will question his ability to solve his problems and face responsibility that is his. This brings insecurity. Still quoting from the book, it says, Still another harm to consider is the woman's relationship to her employer, especially if he's a man. She's accustomed to looking up to her husband as the director of her activities. But when she finds herself taking orders from another man, it's an unnatural situation. She um, owes him obedience as her employer, and in countless hours of close contact, she may even find herself physically attracted to him. You see this a lot in the working world where women actually end up being attracted to their bosses. Seeing him at his best, and perhaps you see this in the uh, show Scandal, which I don't watch, I refuse to, but I've heard much about it to know that this is an exact situation where she becomes attracted to her boss. So seeing him at his best, and perhaps as a more dynamic and effective leader than her husband, she makes comparisons unfavorable to her husband, sorry, sorry, plant, whose faults and failings she knows all too well. So she begins to compare her husband to her boss. She really only sees her boss's good side and a little bit of his bad, but she sees everything from her husband. So she starts to see her boss in a better light. Working in the world also harms your children. So when a mother works due to a compelling emergency, children adjust to the situation. They're able to understand when a genuine emergency exists 
They may suffer neglect, but they don't feel a lack of love or concern. But when a mother works by choice, great harm can come to the child. When he realizes she prefers to work instead of taking care of him, that she places her interests or luxuries as head of his basic needs, this raises doubt about her love as a mother. The children of working, and this is from the children's point of view, okay, just saying. <laughs> children of working mothers usually suffer considerable neglect, not in all cases, but in most. The woman who works must dedicate herself to her job in order to succeed and justify her pay. During the working hours, her job, her job's a priority. At times, it will be demanding, and her children become less demanding. They're naturally the ones who suffer. And again, this isn't to say that you can't be a good mom and work. This is literally just trying to shift your point of view from just yours, being able to see your husband's view, your children's view, you know, not just focusing on yourself. Working mothers make this statement, often make this statement. It's not the quantity of time, quality of, quantity of time you spend with your children, but the quality. When they come home, they try to make up for their absence by spending quality time, but most of this is just talk. A working mother is either too busy in the evening to do anything with her children or she's too tired. But even if she does give her child quality time, here's something to consider. The mother's presence in the home during the day means everything to the child's feeling of well-being even though she's busy with homemaking tasks. It's not always possible or even necessary for a busy mother to take time away from her work to play with her children. And too much attention can calm the, cause the child harm and make them too demanding. But your presence in the home provides a security for your child and helps them to develop normally. When a child comes home from school and he may from school, he may not pay much attention to his mother or be overly aware that she's home, but her presence is felt and the child is benefited. If the mother's away from the home for long hours, the child may not complain, but they'll miss her presence. If the mother's missing for an extended time, the child can become seriously um, slowed in their growth and development. Early medical studies have proven this to be true. Then there's also the harm to society as a whole. The trend for the mother to be out of the home is a pattern of living which has extended for many years, especially here in the U.S., since the emergency that happened in World War II where millions of women were put into the factories to take the place of the men who were at war. It's been during this time um, that we have really... Whoop. I'm like, what? What the? Yeah. Sorry, it's been during this time that we really begin to embrace the woman working in the home and it's really begin, we begin to see the damage. You can see the damage in our society today. So to conclude, um, one, I'm going to challenge you to do a few things. List the ways that you be, can become more, more feminine in your role as a woman. So out of those four roles that we have, figure out some ways that you can begin to magnify those roles. So can you maybe get a homekeeping binder if you have a huge family? Or maybe can you dedicate yourself to taking care of your home better? Or maybe you can dedicate yourself to spending more quality time with your husband and your children. Finding different ways that you can really begin to expand in those roles. If you're working outside of your home, test your priorities and make sure that it's not just about you. Ask yourself, is your job more important than your family? Uh, figure out how much you truly, really earn after you pay for the second car and all the costs that go along with that, your work clothes, your children being in daycare, and the list goes on. How much money is really left from your paycheck? You need to make sure you're including your Medicare or your Social Security or your taxes or any payroll deductions and see how much is truly left. A lot of women who have families and are working outside of the family will find that they're literally just paying for the extra expenses and that if they were to get rid of those expenses, they would be able to quit their jobs. Um, if you are a woman who is working and wants to quit, first figure out why you started working in the first place. If it was something because you needed to meet a need, you need to first figure out how you can now meet that need without a job. So if that means cutting expenses, which is usually the biggest thing, you need to figure out that first. Then you need to have a discussion with your husband about it. And then the last little challenge I really want to give to you is today is to take one day this week, one day ladies, you can do it, and begin to live out all of the lessons that we've learned so far in this whole series of womanhood and relationships. Begin to take a day where maybe you dress a lot more femininely, you walk with grace and you move your arms with grace versus, you know, being very, er, you know what I mean? And watching how you speak with your husband and 
just um, even take a day and watch a movie like the the barefoot contessa and become inspired by people women who truly fulfilled you know that feminine role or women who knew their feminine nature you know take a day and really begin to embrace these things and see how they make you feel i'm telling you you'll feel like a whole new woman so the next video um we're going to be talking about how to be happy i believe how to be happy as a woman in your role um and in general how to radiate happiness as a woman because that's something that uh, people expect to see in us as women so i'm sorry if this video was a little bit choppy um i'm trying my best it's it's friday it's preparation day for me um i'll be honoring shabbat later tonight until tomorrow and so I'm trying to record this video early because I do want to try to get videos out for you guys on Saturdays without me having to put in the work. So my goal is to be able to get at least a couple videos or so edited and um, put together and scheduled so that they can come out and you guys can have stuff to watch during Shabbat. If you honor Shabbat on Saturday, I know some people do it on different days depending on what they've learned as far as Yah's calendar. Um, so I really wanted to really kind of push myself and because I started late this week as far as putting out videos, I didn't really start till Thursday, so yesterday, so I kind of got myself a little bit behind. Um, so I was in a little bit of a rush today and my camera battery died and my husband's almost home and I wanted to make sure that I was done filming before he got home because I really don't like filming when he gets home. I like to be able to spend time with him and put my work away. So. I do apologize if this video is a little bit choppy, um, especially because like when my phone started ringing, and, but that's life, I'm not perfect, and I purposely don't cut those things out because I want you guys to see that my life is not perfect and that I'm still getting the hang of this YouTube thing and trying to put out more and more content for you girls. And so um, I love you from the bottom of my heart and let me know if there's anything else that you guys do want to see, and I will see you in the next video. Shalom, shalom.